Lots of survival news to cover today. Obviously, big reveals as part of the Games Fest, as well as other stuff going on with Valheim showcasing more of the concept art for armor that's going to be coming in the Ashlands update towards the end of the year. And of course, we're expecting their next update to drop maybe in the next couple of weeks. Maybe we'll get news this weekend with the Xbox and PC Gamer Showcase. We got a release window for Return to Modia, the new Lord of the Rings survival crafting game, as well as Powell, the Pokemon rip-off style crafting game that's going to be coming out next year. All that plus 7 Days to Die, Alpha 21 going live this weekend, Witchfire, a roguelike FPS shooter game I'm very interested in. First proper dev blog talking about June, the Funcom MMO that's going to be coming. We'll see more details hopefully this weekend. And Serum, the next Toplex survival game experience. One to four player co-op. Is it going to be any good? We've got another gameplay trailer. And if you're not subscribed to my second channel for more chilled, crafty survival games, then you're missing out on games like Wizards with a Gun. I'll be showcasing that late today with a new demo. Action RPGs based on manga properties like Sandland. And a little bit of space scrap scavenging with games like this as well. So do take a look for that as I'm going to give some details about these games today. But you'll see more about them on my second channel for sure in the future. So please leave a like. Tell me what game you're looking forward to most. I've been back on the horse with these survival shows. And I'd really like to see some support from them. Let's go. It's the survival show. Lord of the Rings Return to Moria had another trailer showing off gameplay last night, but there is a bit of confusion still, or maybe not, about what exactly platforms it's going to launch on. They've always said it would launch on the Epic Games Store as in the PC exclusive for a while, but it was up in the air about whether or not it'd be launching on consoles at the same time. I had it in my opinion that it was going to be an early access title, but it looks like from their FAQs last night it is going to be a full game, it will be on the Epic Games Store exclusive, and it should be coming to Xbox and PlayStation at the same time. Summer Games Fest, obviously the showcase that this trailer was shown at, also tweeted that it would be coming to the consoles at the same time. But it's still just a bit ambiguous. Even the FAQs state that the game is currently exclusive to the Epic Games Store on PC and will be coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. I've tried to ask in this Discord, haven't had an answer yet, but I'll let you guys know. Either way, I'm excited about this one. I think this could be one of the survival games of the year. If you hadn't seen any of my videos talking about it, it's an 8 player co-op crafting survival game, obviously set in the Mines of Moria in the fourth age, so after the events of Lord of the Rings and of course The Hobbit. And it's not based on a TV show or books, the game is going to be procedurally generated with a variety of different style dungeons I do believe that have different presets in them, but yes, will be procedurally generated. So no landscape will maybe look the same, there are going to be specific boss fights in the game and a plethora of enemies. No specific date given other than fall, so that obviously starts in September, and yeah, I guess anywhere between September and December we may see it arrive. Power World was originally scheduled to come out, I do believe, in 2022, then obviously it got pushed back to 2023, and now we have a definitive date, or at least a month, January 2024. It's a Pokemon game made by the same people that made Craftopia. You'll be running around, gathering your Pokemon, freeing them from factories, to then give them some guns and all sorts of arsenals to take on other Pokemon. Yeah, that's a thing. Of course, it's not an actual official licensed Pokemon game, but you get the idea. It may be interesting to some. Surprisingly, it's like number 16 in the top 100 most wishlisted games on Steam. So some of you guys really like the idea of this. Who knows? Maybe I'll cover it on the second channel. It's just a bit weird, this mix of cute and cuddly with making them get guns. Is there going to be a release date for June Awakening? Maybe? Probably not though. I think it's going to be some details given as they're showcasing stuff off on the PC gaming show on June 11th. Yes, that's June the month, not June the month. They're also showing off their first proper dev blog with lots of references to real life locations and of course in-game art, conceptual and more. There is going to be the stunningly big stark architecture that we've seen inspired by the books of course and in the movies. They're keen to also point out that the game isn't going to be just a desert. As I told you guys once a good long time ago, June does have some surprising topography under the ground and different areas. There is going to be some sort of greenery somewhere and not just all desert. Effectively, there's going to be a ton load of canyons that will give us a chance to see something a little bit more brighter. Still not too sure what kind of game this is. Is it going to be an MMO like New World where your bases or your structures, your homes are safe in different settlements? Or is it going to be like Conan Exiles where you can actually base raid in PvP servers at least anyway? 
The blog details that you'll only be able to build bases in places where there are outcrops and rock rather than just the flat desert, obviously to stop the sandworm from getting at you. They've also revealed that obviously the servers will perhaps have hundreds of players on it, so it is going to be a big server-based game, not the 40, 50 maximum that is on Conan Exiles. So it's looking okay. I've still got a bit of a down on Conan Exiles. I do feel like they kind of ruined that game in the last couple of years. But there's no doubt about it. I'm eager and excited to see what could happen with this. Let's just hope there isn't loads of cash shops and all that nonsense. Or if it is, then maybe the price is reflected of that and that we've got lots of content to justify having so much DLC and paid microtransactions. MMOs just aren't really my bag in general. I do like the more freedom that you get in survival games, but it looks like they're trying to combine the best of both worlds. We'll find out more on June 11th at the PC Games Show. I'll have all the recap details and that and more. Serum, published by Toplitz Games, is coming. Maybe not soon, as there still isn't a release date, but there is a new trailer showing off more of the gameplay. This is going to be a one to four player co-op game, and it does look like it's going to be more of an adventure survival experience. Although with four players, you would imagine that maybe, yes, there is a lot of open world to explore, set in a spooky forest and mangroves and areas, investigating laboratories to hopefully find a cure, because that number on your wrist is what you've got to keep up. You've got to keep finding or making producing this green substance the serum to keep you alive so maybe not food and water just this serum there's lots of crafting elements into it it does look a bit more involved as well which i like the idea of and yeah we'll have to see if it's really going to be more narrative or a sandbox experience like i said with four players i do think it might be a bit more open world than i first thought so fingers crossed lots of mutated creatures although most of them do look like just boars and yeah it could be interesting hopefully coming out i'm guessing towards the end of this year or probably more than likely next year they've listed it will be early access of course taking on feedback on about how to improve crafting no price details or anything like that and they reckon it will be in early access for at least one year Let's hope it's not as bare bones as Star Sands. That was another Toplitz production that really just wasn't worth a release when it first came out. I don't think it really that massively improved over the next few months until it eventually did release in 1.0 and then console. But then again, I haven't played it recently. Let me know if that game also ended up being good. This is the second gameplay trailer we've seen now or showcasing of the game. The game currently behind it, I have tried a few variations on survival in the past, like prototypes and demos, but none of them really took off. So hopefully this one will. So tons of stuff going on, maybe not all strictly survival games, but definitely stuff you're going to see on here, the main channel. This is Witchfire. I've been following this for years. I showed off the very first trailer and then kept you guys up to date with a few dev blog videos. But it's taken a while, as most games do. Made from, obviously, the creators of Ethan Carter, Vanishing of Ethan Carter. But maybe more important for this game, Bulletstorm as well. And yes, it's a dark fantasy FPS roguelike game. It's going to be just bombastic with the amount of different weapons that you'll have, the different types of ammo and a little bit of magic as well pretty much doom in a fantasy setting and i'm totally down for it i can't wait to show this off i will be covering it mainly on the main channel for sure as it definitely is something i want to get into i love the aesthetic and the setting photorealistic graphics it just looks absolutely bombastic it is going to be early access only on the epic game store before coming i'm guessing to steam in a year's or six months time and of course consoles eventually 20th september this year I'm expecting the next couple of weeks the next Valheim updates go live, but it won't be the Ashlands content. If you don't know, that's been worked on at the same time and prepping for it, but that won't be until the end of the year. We're expecting siege engines and fiery forts that we're going to have to take over against the charred remains of whoever was defending it. But the next update is going to be Hilda's Quest, although it's been revamped and recalled something else, and I'm expecting some sort of drop or reveal at the Xbox Games Showcase since they've got a pretty big exclusive deal with them. So this stuff, though, is obviously for the Ashlands. This concept art shown off by Grimcore and retweeted by the main account, or tweeted by the main Valheim account, and it looks fantastic. I'm loving some of these designs. I think they're really, really cool. But the next two particularly are what I really, really like. This one is the hot summer Viking look and I'm totally down for it. I know it might be um, not strictly as masculine as some people might want, but I think this looks really cool. I love the actual just mesh on skin. It's just giving me the vibes of like Mad Max a little bit and yeah, totally down for this. That was until I saw this. Now I'm really excited. I think this should absolutely be the armor that we're wearing in Ashlands. It would make more sense since it's going to be a hot area. You can't be carrying or wearing big, massive chainmail armor everywhere. 
the mystical and mysteriousness of the hood with the mist, I think this is a banger. Of course, these are all concepts. None of them might remain. They might all be jettisoned in something or favor of something different. They might not all be put into the game. I'm guessing only maybe one of these sets could actually make it, or maybe all of them. Maybe it's going to be like two sets at least, like we've got with the Miss Lands. But take it with a large bag of salt, according to Grimcore, who replied to me on Twitter. So exciting times. I'm like I said, I'm expecting a reveal. They said that the update would be live before the end of the month, and so obviously with the Xbox showcase and the PC game showcase, I reckon we're going to get a teaser trailer for the next update for Valheim. But yeah, this stuff won't be here that you're seeing right now until probably end of the year at best. Seven Days to Die Alpha 21 is going live on June the 12th and they've got their streamer weekend that they do where only specific streamers get access to the upcoming update for the whole weekend. I kind of hate these things. I get giving early access to creators to show stuff off specifically to do a bit of marketing and I get sometimes with a brand new game giving creators a bit of early access to do reviews and get things ready. But for an early access title, I do feel like it's a bit of a piss take for everyone that's bought this game. Considering this game's nearly coming up to 10 years old at this point, in early access still. Don't piss about showing streamer stuff before actually everyone else gets a chance. This should be going live for everyone at the same time. Add to that that their requirements for this are pretty harsh. For an up and coming young streamer or creator trying to get involved in this, if you love Seven Days to Die, it's pretty tough. You've got to have certain amount of viewers watching, certain amount of subs and followers. It's just a little bit meh. And just a little correction, I think I might have got something wrong last time I spoke about 7 Days to Die. I did say that after this, Alpha 22 is looking to be where they're going to launch the console version. So from what they were talking about in the stream, the devs did talk about it going through Sir on consoles. So that to me meant it should be coming out relatively soon. Because when you're in Sir, normally the game comes out like a month later. A bunch of you guys did correct me though and state that they said it would come out with Alpha 22 a little later on in the stream. And so yes, it might not be as long to wait for Alpha 22. Supposedly it's going to be a bit quicker, maybe the start of next year. Eventually consoles are going to get the new remaster or the full version of 7 Days to Die that you are going to have to buy again and looks like maybe not even a discount. Alpha 21 is significantly revamping a lot of the graphics and the world, giving everything a nice, maybe slightly more modern look. I don't know man, some of this stuff definitely looks good, it looks more of an improvement on what's been in 7 Days to Die, but didn't they do this in one of their updates a couple of years ago already? I'm sure there's a lot more to it than I imagine with lots of quality of life features and there's some other big things at play here as well. I guess I really should try and dip into it, but they are again still on my crap list just like Funcom because of the way that consoles have been treated, so I doubt I'm really going to cover it. Otherwise, you guys convince me. Tell me to shut up and play the game, and maybe I'll do it. So obviously I showed off Power World earlier. That would be on my JPG Crafted channel, but there's a whole bunch of other games that got news and announcements that I'm going to be covering as well. So that's all going to be in a separate little video, taking a look at games like Wizard With A Gun. If you like Biomutant and similar RPG action adventures, maybe Sandland might float your boat. I might be covering this on the second channel as well. It's manga influence as you've got all different vehicles to take on enemies and demons, as well as regular combat with a dose of magic. Manga's not really my thing, but I like the idea or look at this one. So yeah, you're going to see more news about this on my second channel. And Space Trash Scavengers, a new crafting sandbox game where obviously you're picking up space trash and you're using it to make your base and survive. It's kind of like Mario Galaxy mixed in with a proper survival game. I like the look of this one. So expect to see all that plus more deep dives in what to expect in terms of games that suit my second channel. And that video will be going live pretty much today later on. As always, I'll be here with the recaps of anything else that get revealed over the weekend with Games Fest. We've got the Xbox Showcase. We've got PC Gamer Show. I'm sure there's going to be some big stuff going on. As always, the home of survival news. I'll see you at Bags later.